you guys been all day? Uh, uh, hi, how are you? Where are we right now? New York City. No, I know that. I, I'm saying that. I feel like we're in the, pardon me, expression, bowels of this building right now. Uh, nothing but the best. That's what. All right. Exactly. Uh, Larry, how long do we have? And, and I call him Larry just because I assume that's his name. Uh, Larry, how long do we have? How did David have his but that, that didn't work? I'm number one. This is the number one mic. It is the number one. Yeah. Yeah, please. Uh, we go back a long way, don't we, Larry? We do. All the way to 1994. Actually, I said today, this is the first time I Whatever, this is not a lot. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Just plug it into data. There you go. I was flipping it, and it wasn't going either way. That's what she said. <laughs> oh no, it's not on, is it? I, I mean, uh, <laughs> let me have a look at you people. <laughs> the only way out is back that way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's like so, Bush with the door in China when you exactly. get out the door. So, Larry, what were you saying? So I was just May saying. Still you, Larry? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're not up to weight yet. So we had a we had David Gerald in, and I kind of did a real quick poll. Let me do a flip David this. David Gerald is here. He was here just now and flipped. What does he do, David? Gerald? He was a writer. He wrote on the. Show. He did the triples. He yeah, created he the triples. Yes, yeah. yes, and many other things. He's a wonderful writer. He I, is. I've had lunch with him actually. Yes. Yeah. You could still call him David too if you. If you yeah. uh, might call him Larry. <laughs> Uh, that kind of how yeah. many? I'm just I, the last hour. I asked how many. We had mostly people came to Star Trek through original series, and I'm just curious. Show of hands, how many people came? Your first Star Trek brought you to fandom was Next Generation. Okay, so we've kind of evened things up, and then original series. Yeah, we've almost evened things up now. But you know, well, this hotel Enterprise. <laughs> The Orville. Yeah. Okay. So Larry. So Brent. Yeah. I'm gonna call you Brent, whether you want me to or not. Yeah, of course. Uh, look, can I ask a question of the uh, of the folks here? Let's go. Yeah. Uh, how many of you are from America? Okay, three. You mean like and, born? Uh, huh? Born in America. Born in America. Yes. Yeah. I said America. Yes. <laughs> Uh, where are you from? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. No, the, where are you from, young lady? Iowa. Chewing gum? Originally. You're not chewing gum. <laughs> I'm not chewing gum. You. Where are you from? Bronx. Huh? Bronx? The Bronx? Yeah. Bronx? Yeah. What is she saying? Newark. Huh? Newark. Newark? Where is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's in uh, France, right? <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, so, Larry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just... Uh, no, no, no. I didn't, I didn't know what to I was gonna... I just wanted to know what language I should speak in. Oh, uh, uh, it's... Yeah, okay. Because I, I am multilingual. Even before the Universal Translator was kicking in, right. Um, no, I just, I just want to say, we're going to talk Star Trek, but I haven't had this chance before. So, you know, Data and the Soongs and Dr. Olin, uh, Okun, yes. But I, can I ask you about the audition process and the first times for Bob Wheeler. Oh, for Bob Wheeler? Yes, on Night Court. Yes. That was, that's my first memory of you. How many of you uh, <laughs> found yourself watching Star Trek because of Night Court? <laughs> <laughs> okay, same here. But I knew uh, you. A lot of us knew you because of Night Court. Of Night Court. Uh, which is surprising to me, you know, because I had done uh, many things. Well, I know, but I mean, you're sitting in the Midwest, and Night Court's, you know. Night Court was a great show. Yeah. I, I, I was hoping that at some point, and I have a feeling it might have happened, that they might have done a reboot of Night Court if, uh, sadly, Harry had yeah, passed away yeah, recently. Yes. But, um, yeah. Um, but uh, Night Court, well, I auditioned. I, 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 there was a character that I did when I, I'm from Texas. Who, who, how many here from Texas? 
Yeah. <laughs> Dad? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> uh, where in Texas are you from? Uh, Spring, Tomball. Spring, Tomball. Been there. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> wait, the guy in front of you said he was from Texas. He lied? I visited. You, you visited Texas. Did you hear me clearly? Did I say who here has visited Texas? I didn't say that. <laughs> you like Texas. Okay. Tomball, nice, man. Because uh, you're Houston. I'm from Houston. Yeah. That's near Tomball. Yeah. Uh, you're shaking your head in front of him like you know. You, you, you have no idea. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so anyway, I was in Texas. Uh, what's your name, by the way? The real Texan guy. Luke. Huh? Luke. Luke. Yeah, see? He's from Texas. <laughs> uh, we, uh... No, what's your name? The fake Texan. Rob. Rob. No. There's nobody in Texas named Rob. Connecticut, right? Or something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Luke, uh, I did this character uh, when I was in Texas, and I was a kid. My friends and I would go to... Did I get some pictures? Uh, and some friends and I would, would go to... Um, you're filming, aren't you? Is this to take back to your land and show people that you're really here? I don't mind. It's, uh... uh so, I was, uh, I, I used to do this character. My friends and I would go to uh, Denny's. You know what Denny's is? Yeah. Is there a Denny's here, here in the city? No. No. In Jersey, yeah. When I first came to New York, uh, there was Howard Johnson's. Yeah. Right here in Times Square. One of the first places I ever went was Howard Johnson's in Times Square. Fantastic, the clam roll. Who can forget that? Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> I broke a tooth in uh, Howard Johnson's. Uh, yeah. And I was so young, I didn't think to like, you know, hey, pay for my tooth. I just went home and paid for my own bill. Well, at least you didn't swallow it, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, Souvenir. So I would go into Denny's. Denny's very much like a Howard Johnson's kind of place, and and. Uh, do you remember Schlitz uh, beer? Yeah. Do they still make Schlitz? No. 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 Schlitz was like really good. That's why my grandparents drank Schlitz beer. Supermarket so, beer. What? Supermarket beer. Well, a lot of, you get a lot of beer. In Not in some states. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I would go in and uh, with my friends and they would, uh, the, the helper waitress would come along and she would say, uh, can I take your order? And I'd say, I'd like a big old piece of pumpkin pie and a couple tall boy Schlitzes to wash it down. And, um, and we used to get a big kick out of that, my friends and I. No one else, but um, clearly. And um, so I went to audition for Night Court. Primordial Bob Wheeler was what exactly. that was. Yeah. Went to audition for Night Court and I thought, gee, I wonder if I could do this character. I called my character Elmo. They were called it that one, Bob Wheeler, and so I, I did that character, and they cast me, and I thought, this is like dying and going to heaven, you know? To be able to do a character that I've done since I was a kid and get paid for it, and that's what happened. So I'm just, so when they wrote the lines and wrote the show, did they have, was it, I mean, because that show was like Barney Miller, it was just a parade of characters right. through the court, so... Did they have it be, it's the, this redneck couple, this hit couple, or did you totally, it was blank slate and you got to do that? And no, they no, made no. it that way. No, no, it was, it was written to be this, uh, these people from West Virginia. Well, they said they were from Yugoslavia, but um, <laughs> they did. But uh, they were from West Virginia, and um, they, they, they just one thing led to another, and I was lucky. I got to do it. You had to be back. Yeah. And then no, they kept I, bringing us back for more. I just remember watching a night court reading, and I wait a minute, that's, that's Brent Spiner is yeah. doing, is yeah. doing that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the role I'm proudest of that I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> It never was quite as good as it was in Denny's, but... I, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I just never had a chance to ask you about Bob Wheeler. Right. Because a lot of, seriously, a lot of people... Wonder. Remember, yeah, and it was very... But how many times did they have you back? So we were on six yeah. two-part episodes. Right. Or, or three two-part episodes. We did six episodes. On a show like that, with the characters flying through, that was... You were like... Well, we were actually hired... Uh, well, at the last episode we did, uh, the woman who played my wife and myself, we bought the newsstand on the set and um, in the courthouse. <laughs> and the next season, we were going to be coming back 
uh, as regulars on the show, but in the hiatus between seasons, I got Star Trek. And so I had to choose which one should I do. And uh, yeah, I think I made the right decision. Thank you. Uh, however, uh, the, the woman who played my wife on Night Court felt I made a terrible decision. And I can't blame her. She's a lovely actress, actually. Annie O'Donnell, fantastic. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, did you have anything so, else you I wanted to ask, talk about, I just, Larry? Because I can I, leave I, now. Oh, I just. Because <laughs> I heard the lines forming up at the table. They, oh. could, they couldn't get in here. No, that's it. Um, can I ask you uh, something historical? Yeah. I think the world knows, I've had it in my book, people have known that when they cast, I'd like to ask you about the actual data casting. Yes about the process, and then also, were you just a human, I've seen the pictures, when they didn't know what color to make the android, and the blue, and the pink, and the gray, well, did you, you know, sit there was, patiently and I say, was, did they listen to you at all? Let me just say, first of all, I was always a human. Uh, <laughs> my entire life, as far as I remember. Um, I, no, they didn't, they didn't consult with me. Wait, have you never no, been no, in show no. business? No, no, no. I'm saying after you had the part, oh. did, 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 is it because I, yeah, did they, anything come out of your mouth like, that looks ugly, and they went, we don't care, or did you, you know, or you just sit there as there a There were very guy, few people, I mean, very few things I refused to do. Um, clearly, you saw the show. And, uh, <laughs> but, um, no, I thought the writing was good, and so I was pretty much happy to do, and, and, and also, when I did make that rare phone call to say, I don't think this is quite what Data would say, uh, they would say to me, just do your job. And uh, so, uh, yeah. Noah, so what was the, you walk in, they say it's an Android. Did they have a clear picture? Could you tell your well, watch? Yeah, yeah, I mean like, did you have an idea? Did they give you any direction? Did they no. look wobbly with it in the beginning? You know? No, I had no idea. I just, uh, it was in the audition process that I sort of found what I was going to do, uh, and, and then they gave it to me, they let me do it, yeah, because yeah. clearly nobody else had any idea what they were going to do, but the good thing about playing an android at that point in time uh, is that not that many people had done it, and so you could kind of do whatever you wanted, and nobody could really say, well, that, that's not really what an android would do. Because who knew, right? So I had kind of free reign to do whatever I wanted. And uh, I felt like, you know, the less I did, the better. Mm -hmm. um, the more kind of restrained I could be, the better. Because I let the audience paint the character on, onto me. And uh, I, I remember I kept saying, uh, those of you who have seen the show, I know uh, I can see a lot of blank faces. You don't <laughs> know what I was talking about. but. It was a space show with uh, Patrick Stewart. And anyway, uh, the, the um, have a seat, relax, take a load off. Um, the, uh, uh, you, you know, I, uh, the character said quite often, I do not have feelings, or I do not feel, I don't, you know. But people would write me and say, oh, I can see you were feeling something in that scene, you know? And I thought, great. You know, I don't have to do anything. If the audience will help me paint this character. And so... See, Elmo was, was slipping through even then, see? That's, exactly. That's what it... That's, but it was sort of a symbiotic uh, thing between me and the audience that we co-created this character. And uh, there you have it. Yeah. yeah. Well, something else I always wanted to ask you. I know the first few years of the show... Yeah. I don't know, in that cast, maybe Michael knew what fandom and conventions were and everybody else was pretty like, okay, I'll, I'll dip my toe in this a little bit at a time. How would Michael know? Hmm? How would Michael know? He'd been a fanboy. Oh, oh, okay. He didn't tell anybody in Hollywood, but he... he I thought you were saying he knew because he knew what it was like to have fans. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he still doesn't well, know. Well, he was fine until he took the head off. Yeah. Yeah, okay. he was fine for yeah. me. But I know you didn't do conventions for a long, and I remember in the day, you said, I don't want to, since Data is not his human face, the others have their, aside from Michael. Yeah. Um, but you had, I remember for several years, you didn't want to do conventions because yeah. you didn't want to be out of the makeup. Yeah, basically. I didn't really, plus I, I was not really trained to do this. I, I had, you know, my job was acting, and uh, so, and it wasn't until Patrick finally said to me, you know, you're missing a bet, you should do this. Really, said, you're missing a bat. <laughs> so, uh, um, 
the very first convention I ever did was probably in 1990, 1991, something like that, was in this hotel. And uh, it was so much nicer then. Uh, I mean, like this room was huge. <laughs> I was, no, I was on a stage. And it, well, I am, but but it was a big room. Yeah. It was like a ballroom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what would that look like if we were in the ballroom right now? Was Was anybody at the, his first convention? Yeah, was here? anybody there? You guys were there? Just you? No, no. There's a guy behind you. There's two guys. Always look behind you. You were here, all three of you guys. I haven't changed a day, have I? Isn't that, isn't that just the most peculiar thing? I mean, that was almost that was 30 years ago, and. and uh, uh, so kind of you to say, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, oh, I said it, didn't I? Well, anyway. Um, you know, this hotel was where the very first Star Trek convention was held. It's the first, the famous first yeah. was here in 1972. Really? Yes. Well, Leonard, I think, was the other guest besides me at the one, well, you'll remember better than me, but was Leonard there that time? I think he was. Huh? Not the same day as you. I, I swear I saw him getting into a, a car, running, because people were running after him. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I'm so glad I'm doing this. Uh, well, uh, Larry, there's a, something I've always wanted to ask you. Uh, who are you? <laughs> My mom is asking me that the other day. I, I, that's... All right. Oh, so, so, do you have more? Do, uh, no, no, I just. I you know, because yeah. uh, they have to be. They have, uh, We've got questions. Yeah, let's five go. after they're coming let's in. Let's go. There. Uh, let's see. Does anyone have their hands up? I don't see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, sir. That's uh, it. Uh, I have a question about another role you had uh, the role of John Adams in 1776. Mm. Uh, what encouraged you to do what William Daniels did, which was to sing? What encouraged me to, to do what William Daniels did, did not do. Did not not do. Right, he, did, he did the whole Rex Harrison talk. Well, about uh, I, you know what? He did it really well. Uh, <laughs> this is 1776. Anybody? How many of you saw that show? All of you were at... I, I thought I knew you. Uh, yeah, we were actually right around the corner here at the round, what was then the Roundabout Theater. It was a cool theater. Uh, the, the Laura Pels, I think it was. It was downstairs, and had, there were like two different theaters. It was great. Uh, and I did this production, 1776, and uh, well, that was the thing I thought I could bring to it, maybe, because uh, William Daniels was sensational in the part, and really, he was it. He's the greatest John Adams they'll ever be, and, yeah. and uh, but I thought what I could bring to it is I can also sing the part, and, you know, Maybe I'll add that wrinkle to it, and uh, it was just a phenomenal experience. You you were Did you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear them. Uh, <laughs> let me repeat what they said. <laughs> they thought I was sensational. Well, pretty sensational. Yeah. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I did 200 performances. We, we were here at the roundabout, and then we moved to the Gershwin Theater, which. Um, it had gone from being this intimate theater experience, which was fantastic. You felt like you were in the Continental Congress with all the guys. We moved to the single biggest theater in the world, I think. Uh, the lights, the the lights came from Radio City Music Hall. I think it's it was that. I mean, I one time I got up in the second balcony to look and see what we looked like on stage. And we looked like raisins on a couch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yes, sir. Uh, two quick questions. Yeah. So the first one is. Question A. Question He's asking a. two questions, so you know. If you want to leave for either one of them, <laughs> come back. Uh, so question A. a. Um, if you can talk a little bit about what it was like developing your, your like the way you emoted and your character in the LOL episode, um, and then question B is if you could talk a little bit about working with Saul Rubinek on Warehouse 13, because you guys are such two big, awesome personalities. I'm wondering if like, there were any cool stories you could tell. Did we fight? Is that what you were wondering? <laughs> uh, we, we, got, we came to fisticuffs a few times. But, uh, you know what? The first question was, um, they were saying that I was 
pretty sensational in 1776. <laughs> no, uh, the first question was uh, about Lal in, um, what was that show called? The Offspring. Uh, you know what, uh, how did I develop the character in how, that? Like, how did you, I guess, decide how much emotion to show in relation to that? I showed no emotion. That was exactly no, no. it. But you painted it on me. You went, you said, he's feeling something. I can, uh, no, you know what, the, the thing I remember most about doing um, The Offspring was, it was the first episode that John Franks ever directed of anything. That was his directorial debut. And so as a cast uh, and crew, we were already very close by then. We really wanted it to go well. So everybody kind of did their best work on that show. And then we were also blessed to have Hallie Todd play Lal, who was fantastic. You know, her mother, uh, Hallie Todd's mother, was the next door neighbor on the Dick Van Dyke show. Uh, yeah, uh, Millie Helper. Yeah. She was Millie Helper, yeah, and that's, uh, Hallie is, is her daughter. Yeah. Second part of your question, question B, if I recall, what was question B? Yeah, Saul Rubinek coming to blows. Uh, no, I'll tell you what. Saul, uh, on, uh, Saul Rubinek, did anybody watch uh, Warehouse 13? Good show, huh? Why they ever took that show off the air? I, no, no, I mean, it was, it was really starting to peak. It filled up. Yeah. It what? They filled up and they couldn't afford Warehouse 14. Well, so. that could be. That could be. Uh, or they couldn't afford Saul, one or the other. But, uh, <laughs> You should have shot him in the transporter when you had the chance. Exactly. Thing, thing. Well, I'll tell you an interesting story. Interesting to me. Uh, if it's not to you, I'll be able to tell because your head will be slumped like that. Uh, that uh, Saul Rubinek uh, played Artie on um, Warehouse 13. He's a fantastic actor. He's not just a fantastic actor. He's a great writer, director. He, he really can do it all. He's very, very bright and creative. See, that's, that's the look I was looking for. Uh, you've got to do this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, there you go. Uh, Saul, uh, as great as he was on that show, I had already worked with him, as well you know. Uh, he was on Next Generation. Uh, he did an episode called The Most Toys, uh, where he played... Kivas Fajo. Yes. How I remembered that. <laughs> Kivas Fajo, who collected things from the universe, and so he wanted one of a kind, and I was a one of a kind, so he kidnapped me. And um, he was absolutely fantastic in that part, but I'll tell you a story about that. You may already know this, but the role was originally, when we first started shooting it, uh, there was an actor named. Um, Oh, I've gone blank. I knew you were going to look at me. But he was like a real person. Rappaport. Yeah, my, yes, Michael Rappaport. Michael Rappaport, yes. who, yeah, he was in Time Bandits, I yeah, think. He was yeah. the star of Time Bandits. And um, shot for a day, at least two a day. days. Two days. Yeah. We shot on, started shooting on Thursday, shot Thursday and Friday, went great. We said, we'll see you on Monday. Over the weekend, he killed himself. Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, obviously, I was the one working with him, and I thought, well, what did I say? I mean, it, no, but uh, I think it was a, a romance gone bad or something. You know, it was really sad because he was a delightful guy. And everybody was stunned. Oh, my God, you know? And we were having a good time, and he was just terrific in the part. And they didn't know what they were going to do because they had, had nothing else on the board. We had to shoot that show. So the director happened to be from Canada. And he said, I know a guy who could do this part. And I said, you know, I know a guy who could do this part. And they, it turned out to be the same guy, and it was Saul Rubinek, yeah. And the reason I knew Saul was because I did a play here in New York at the Public Theater in 1978, maybe, uh, called Leave it to Beaver is Dead. Um, it was Saul Rubinek, myself, uh, a wonderful actor named Maury Chaikin, uh, Mandy Patinkin and Diane Weist. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to do it again. It was a, it was a really great show. Um, so there you are, the Saul Rubinek story.
scripted. With Michael so, Rappaport, yeah. But the di but you know, it's the dynamic of data being his smallness, but him having the control yeah. would have been interesting. But you didn't have quite as much, but. No, but he was he was marvelous, and, and then Saul came in and just knocked it off the park because he's a great yeah, actor. Yeah, yeah. The quirky was there. Exactly. Yeah. Hello. Hey, what would you rather do, the Orville or the new Picard series? Would I rather do the Orville or the new? Are they? Are either one of them asking me? <laughs> <laughs> are you a, a producer for one of those shows? Come on. Oh, uh, well, I, you know, having not seen either of them at this point yet, uh, how do I know? I, I, you know, what if I said both? Yeah, exactly. How about that? How about that, mister? I'll do both of them. And then I'll do a convention. I'll show you. Yeah. Hey. One of my favorite scenes. Today he's saying in the last episode, all good things. I'm wearing two pips instead of three. Uh, did anybody else notice that? <laughs> Do you know what, did you? Is there any chance there was a smudge on your TV? If you'd wiped it off, you'd have seen the third pip. All right, somebody who's got a phone right now. Uh, Pull up uh, a picture of uh, all good things. I don't remember that at all. I mean, well, so you say. I mean, how, how are we supposed to know? Okay, we'll see. We'll get proof in a moment because I know everybody's jumping right to it. Uh, going back. You know, you can't get the service down here. Oh, uh, I don't. I, I don't have any memory of that. But then I hardly ever looked at my pips. <laughs> Well, you were the only one. No. Why have I not been promoted yet? That's not. Well, yes, exactly. Well, you know, don't <laughs> promoted. My understanding is on the original series, um, the, after the first year or two, they, the cast, with the exception of, of Bill and, and Leonard and, and maybe DeForest, the rest of them uh, went and asked for raises. And the studio said, you know what, we can't really give you a raise, but we can give your character a promotion. And, and, and they were happy with that. Uh, we uh, preferred to, to have raises. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Gargoyles, that was a great show, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I just told somebody the other day, a guy wrote me and he says, hey, I'm going to work for a Disney streaming channel. And I said, you know what? Get Gargoyles and remake that because that's a really good show. And I said, I never do a convention that somebody, several people don't ask me about Gargoyles. That should be on. It's so far ahead of its time. I'm actually, do you think a, a live action Gargoyles would work? Yeah. I mean, like, how cool would that be? You don't think it would work? But who asked you that? <laughs> yeah, that was me. Why don't you think it would work? You know what? That's what my son said. Some things should just stay in the form that they are. Like Spider-Man, right? Uh, okay. um, anyway, or, you know, or Wonder Woman. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. How did they come up, and why did they come up with the name of Data and not say Droy or Robot or any of that? How do I know? <laughs> I, I didn't write the show. I, how did they come up with it? Can you call somebody I while we're here? And, no. You know what? I'll tell you one quick story about that, um, if I have time. Yeah, I think I got time. Um, 
we uh, we all got cast after you know multiple auditions. Um, they finally settled on the cast. They actually considered Reggie Jackson, you know, to play seriously to play uh, Jordy. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't know. Maybe he didn't read as well as Lavar. <laughs> but then who does? Uh, and, um, so it's all that PBS training, yet. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but we we met at a hotel uh, at the Sheraton Hotel in in Hollywood, and uh, we met in a big boardroom there, the big table, and we we're all sitting around the table to read the pilot. Uh, what was it called? The Calvary Farpoint. And, um, and to meet each other for the first time, the whole cast, and Gene Roddenberry was there, uh, Bob um, uh, Justman was there, Rick Berman was there, and, and it, was, it was like really kind of cool and exciting. So we get ready, we start reading the script, and Patrick says, Data, and I went, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. And I said, I'm sorry to stop, but and I looked at Gene and I said, uh, is the character Dana or Dada? <laughs> because when I read the script, I thought it was Dada. And he said, well, I'm gonna make a new rule right here. Whoever says the name first, that's what it was what it's gonna be called. And that's the way it went the entire series. Whoever said uh, any one of the, you know, alien beings or anything, whoever said it first, that's the way it was pronounced. And nobody ever said, well, wait, why don't you call it? No, no, I said it first. And so that's how I became data. And that's how the word data, I think, became data. I mean, it was always data and data, but uh, I think in America, data was much more common. And now data is much more common thanks to Patrick Stewart and, and Mom. Yeah. But you, they tell the the first writer's guy did actually took the trouble to say pronounce that like like that. Uh. Yeah. So yes, yeah. Sir Patrick was wielding his mighty scepter. Well, he didn't know. He <laughs> said it British. And he said, "So I was in the boot of my car." <laughs> I'm surprised that didn't make it the boot on the ship, you know? <laughs> uh, 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 yes, ma'am. Uh, Sir Patrick, uh, what do I think of the character of Q? Fantastic. I mean, not just Q, but John Delancey, he was a, a genius. I mean, yeah, brilliant actor. No? Yeah, I've read a lot about it. They didn't like the character of Q? Yeah, was Q was on every show. He was, Q was Gene's genius. He really was. Q was the question of what is this all about? And um, I thought John was sensational. He couldn't have been any better. Yeah. Huh? Millennials, what do they know? <laughs> they didn't like Will Wheaton either. Well, uh, no, 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 no. Will was fantastic. I loved him. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. stage but it's it's uh, you get a chance every night to, to, to be better and and that's sort of like the thrill of, of the stage really is because you know rehearsing is really fun and finally it you know, really is and when you finally you get it and it's there and then opening night it's exciting and then you got to do the same thing eight times a week um, you have to find something to keep going uh, and and that is to try to find something new every night, to try to hone it and make it better and find, uh, you know, something exciting for yourself. Uh, and, uh, I mean, I've been in shows, like I said, I did 200 performances of 1776. And that was a challenge over eight months to do, uh, find something, you know. And what happens is the director, after opening night, he's gone. And now it's the actor's show. And then the director comes back a few weeks later, and he'll look at it and go, what are you doing? That's
that's not what I have directed you to do. And, and uh, then they kind of fix it and make you do again what you were doing opening night. But, um, but yeah, on film you get to, you play with it take after take. But the different problems with film is so expensive to shoot with all the people who are employed and everything. There's so much money involved that you, you've got to really get it as right as you can, as quickly as you can. Yes. Hi. A lot of actors are typecast to a genre shows. Did you have any fears and reservations about Barton, you know, taking any sci-fi genre role? And how did you feel you overcame it? Uh, did I? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I've just done as much work as I can do, basically. I mean, um, I've done as many different kinds of genres as I can do, and as many, you know, I just did this series. Did anybody watch Outcast? There you go, man. Outcast. And that's why... Did you watch it too? And that's why it's still not on. Because... <laughs> only the two of you were watching. And you, you really can't produce a television show that only two people are watching. <laughs> uh, but you can, but not for long. <laughs> yeah. Outcast was a really cool show, wasn't it? It was on Cinemax. Not a lot of people have Cinemax. Uh, Cinemax was uh, it was on Cinemax in America, it was on uh, HBO in Canada, and it was on Fox all over the rest of the world. And it was the number two show in the world, in the rest of the world. And it was the lowest rated show in America <laughs> because nobody had Cinemax. But I played sort of the devil on that show. Uh, it was pure evil. And um, it was nice, it was fun, because I finally got to play myself. <laughs> which, uh, how often do you get that opportunity? Really? Um, yes? Uh, what upcoming projects are you doing? What upcoming projects? You know, uh, I don't think that's really any of your business. Uh, no, I, I, you know what? I've got uh, constantly doing stuff. I did just did a podcast that uh, is um, for Warner Brothers that's Batman. But it's, a, it's like 10 episode series of Batman on a podcast, but it's really funny. I mean, it's, it's, it's more comic than what the Batman got to be, the Christian Bale Batman's got to be, because they were really like intense and heavy. This is not, this is more comic, but... Uh, so, so it's like Batman is host of his podcast and he has villains and people No, they're like knows. radio shows. I yeah. mean, they're just, they're dramas. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> and uh, uh, Jeffrey Wright plays Batman and um, Tina Fey is Catwoman and uh, John Mulaney is the Riddler and I'm the Joker and uh, uh, Seth, uh, Seth, uh, uh, no, Seth, Seth uh, Myers, Myers. Oh, oh, is yeah. in it, and uh, Ike Barinholtz, and I mean, it's a really cool cast. And the guy who wrote it and directed it uh, has been writing and producing on Saturday Night Live for years, so it has a real comic flair to it, but that's what I've done recently. Yeah, and I don't plan to do another album. I mean, I'd like to, but I'll tell you, I'm thinking of doing it when, I, when I'm good and ready to lose a whole bunch more money. <laughs> and uh, it just hasn't happened recently. But, but I do do a live show. I do a concert, a, sort of an act, a, a, you know, thing. Do an hour and 20 minute show, just me and a band. And I sing songs and tell stories. And uh, I'm hoping to do it here at some point. Uh, like standards or what? Oh, Yellow Eyes is really back again? Or no, what? it's not. Well, it's, I do do standards, but it's more like the stories. It's got a theme, the whole mm -hmm. show does. And the songs weave into the stories, and the okay. stories weave into okay. the songs. And, and then it becomes an evening of pure pleasure <laughs> <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, but if I could get, like, the two of you again to uh, come see it. <laughs> God knows I could do it for the rest of my life. <laughs> Can I just ask real quick, does, did anybody have a copy of Old Yellow Eyes is Back? No, I didn't. Okay. Did anybody have a copy of Dreamland? Yeah. Yes. yes. Dreamland is really way better than Old Yellow Eyes is Back. Dreamland oh, is a real... Cinnamon. Old Yellow Eyes okay. is fun. Did I tell you that we first moved to L.A. and we had in Janet's car, which was like her 
divorce car. Yeah. Uh, we had the, we had tape, and it was we played it and taking the kids to school and her driving to Paramount, and it got stuck in the player. And all they had for six months was it's been a long, long time of you. And every people would say, Oh, this look, kids, there's data, there's Brent. Oh, and they'd all start singing, Cast me once and cast me. Anyway. Well, I, I, you know, I was happy to do that that <laughs> CD, but uh, but I felt like Dreamland was really a conceptual piece, and right. I sang with this brilliant singer named uh, Maud Magart, who was unbelievably great. And uh, Mark Hamill did all the other characters in it, and um, how can you go wrong, right? <laughs> Meet Mark, fun, yes. All right. How are we, how, how are we doing? On, we got time. It was we have another three minutes. Because <laughs> yeah. who's coming in? Costumes. Costumes. Some contests. Oh, next. costume contest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever done that before? You know, I am so non-judgmental. <laughs> I would tell them all, you're the best. You really are. Okay, uh, so, anybody have anything else? Uh, Can you sing oh. the song? Yeah. No, I, I, I well, do you see a band? Do you see music? I have my own Uh Okay. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Fresh Out. Yeah, oh, Fresh Out. I was just wondering if you could share with us what was the synthesis of that. And if you can tell us, what was the scandal? The incident, yes. as I called it. That was a web series I did called Fresh Hell. We, we did like 15 episodes. Yes. Yes. I wish I was still doing it, really, because we had great ideas to keep going. But, you know, I was paying for it. The first season, we did eight shows, eight episodes for, that were about six, seven minutes long. Nobody got paid. I had, I, I, it, the whole season cost $800 because, um, and that was sandwiches. That was it. Second season, I put a little more money into it. It looked even better. It got better and better and better. The stories were great. Uh, but I just couldn't keep doing it. And we decided that we were not going to do another season unless we could pay the crew. And, you know, we didn't have advertising or anything but like that. But you were that. a YouTube pioneer. Huh? You were an online pioneer, Brent. That's... I was a pioneer. Yeah. <laughs> But I love that show, and I think that show would have been a huge hit on television, actually. Uh, and that's what we wanted to do, but I'd still like to do it. So, wait a minute, who's the producer is here? <laughs> Nobody? Yeah, okay. Well, Get it back. Do you know anyone? I don't mind doing it in a foreign language. <laughs> you could do it in Germany if... Uh, no? Okay. Uh, yeah? Uh, since you're doing the podcast and playing uh, Joker, have you practiced the laugh? No. Matter of fact, I didn't laugh until the very end. The guy said, oh, can you do a laugh for me? Mm -hmm. and, and so I did. But I, I, I don't know what I did. I was in the studio. Um, <laughs> stop looking at me. <laughs> like I'm going to say something interesting. It's not going to happen. He's trying to fathom a laughless joker. That's well, I know I did laugh at some point in it. But it was like I think they lay it in because I didn't laugh till the end. And so you can laugh this way, and they'll laugh this way, and they'll laugh this way. And that's the way it works. The good thing about doing voiceover and not being on camera is that you can come to work in your pajamas. <laughs> if you have pajamas. Um, I don't. I don't want to go any further. Uh, so, uh, we're about done here? Is that, uh, yeah? Have, oh, you, have you guys had enough? No? No. Okay, one more. So could you see yourself doing the Data character again down the line, or do you feel like it's something in the past and you've moved on from it? Well, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't Data blow up? But they had that amateur playing that other guy, the B4 guy, so yeah. Yeah, but I, huh? What if you had more than one model? More than one, what? You know what, what I'm, are you all on Twitter? A lot of you are. Every day I get, here's how you do it. Well, well, you know, I really... Uh, now, the, now the question though is, yes. we saw a Dr. Soon in the 24th century, and a Dr. Soon in the 22nd, and there's Discovery plop right in the middle of the 23rd. Yeah. What's Discovery? That's... <laughs> it's, uh, it's the new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
hear that show's getting really good, actually. It's in the second season, so yeah, I they had time really to get a breath. And, I hear it's really, I hear it looks fantastic, too. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, and uh, the writers are first-rate writers on that show. They are, it's, it's had three stages of writers, so, you know, yeah. they've gotten, yeah. I said a while ago, you know, there's only one person, Jonathan Frakes, your good buddy, yeah. is the only person in the history of the world who has worked on both Discovery and the Orville. He's directed them. Is that right? He's the only one? one? I'm, nobody I'm else? mocking nobody else? else? Not one other person? Well, there's that one guy that changed his name just so he could claim I, it later. No, his I was memoirs. thinking somebody like, uh, I don't know, Picardo hasn't been on it? No. No? No, no, no. What about, uh, You know what, I take that back, Joe Minoski. Joe Minoski was wrote, on our show. He did, yes. Right, on that show. He wrote and, on both. And, uh, wasn't, uh, is it Gates on Discovery? No. 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 <laughs> well, she should be, darn it. She should be. Um, yes. What, you're asking me about the Picard show? Let me... I really don't know. <laughs> I, they don't send me the scripts uh, and say, can you read the show so if anybody asks you about them, even though you're not a part of this, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what they're doing, really. Yeah. Yes. Is there anything? What's going on out there? I would say. Stop distracting me <laughs> or my audience. Can we like shut the doors or something? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is there anything I wanted to do uh, that they didn't let me do? I did pretty much. You know, the only thing I wanted to do is I had this idea that they should go back in time. We were shooting at Paramount Pictures in Los Angeles, which is a phenomenal uh, lot. It's like old time movie. It's beautiful. And I was hoping that they would go back in time and we would land in the Paramount lot. And we found that they were doing Buck Rogers and that's how we could get around is, is that we were in costume for a Buck Rogers uh, sci-fi show. And I suggested that to them and they said no. <laughs> uh, no. Anyway, I think, uh, are we, I think are we're we done. They, they've got too many people. Uh, the costumers are like really, really. They're really, like, really aggressive, so yeah. be careful <laughs> when they get up here. Thank you so much. It's so nice delighted to see you all. Wait, you are upstairs. The rumors are true, right? I, I will be upstairs in case any of you want to get up close and personal. <laughs> I have a table upstairs also. I also have a meetup for my Portal 47 tomorrow at 12.45 if you're here, but come by my table. After you've seen Brent, come around to Artist Alley and see me too, everybody. Thanks a lot.